Ma'am, I want to start by getting you to talk about the comparison between this interim budget and the last couple of interim budgets, which happened just before the announcement of elections. There was always a lot of populism. You chose to stay away from that. Are you deliberately sending out a message that I'll be back in July and I'll do what I need to at that time? I don't need to do anything right now? Well, the message about us coming back is the way in which you're all reporting about things, how the government has performed, how in the last 10 years those promises which were given were fulfilled and on the ground actually people are actually speaking about the work of this government and not a whisper of corruption. So that's the message which people are themselves giving which you the media are carrying. But I've taken the interim budget as an interim budget and asking for a vote on account just to keep the business going of the government is what it is meant for. I've done only that. When you do a temperature check of the Indian economy, what is it that gives you the greatest reason for optimism and what is it that's giving you nightmare or the most concern at this moment? Um, the optimism bit is because the power of the word of mouth. People who have benefited from government's promises are speaking about it themselves and they are across the board. They don't belong to any one section, one region, one state, one language, one religion. They are all over. And that gives trust in people's mind. People trust, you will probably trust your friends, your neighbors, your peers, your colleagues, rather than trusting a political leader. By nature, India is like that. And therefore, when people say, yes, I've also got a house, Here's the paper. I've got the gas connection. Water's come to my uh, tap. And my sons are, or daughters are getting skills. They are getting recruited. They are going into uh, you know, armed forces colleges, scenic schools. So that power of that word of mouth among beneficiaries or potential beneficiaries is the one which makes me feel that people realize this is a government promise which promises and delivers and the Prime Minister is absolutely seized of everything that is happening in the ground. That is one confidence. The other confidence, try as they may, the opposition in the, their rural states as well have not matched this kind of performance. And top it all, with no one getting any personal pecuniary benefit. Not one scandal in 10 years. The image of India Fragile five, poly policy paralysis, corruption at every level. It's changed in 10 years. You think people of India don't recognize that? So that's the confidence. Challenge and, and worry. You? Yeah. Challenge and worry, more external. Mm. Wars abroad, you know, uncertainty in the Red Sea, fish, uh, marine lines getting affected, transportation, supply chain disruptions. Those, I think in the last three, four years, if we can say with sense of uh, confidence, uncertainty has become the rule of the game. We have to live with it. We have to factor in for it. Since you speak about uh, living with uncertainty and factoring it in, 10 years of Modinomics and you said no scandals. Uh, why the need for a white paper uh, on the state of the economy that the Modi government inherited? Why now? Prime Minister himself has spoken about in 2015 or 16. He said then that there were a lot of people suggesting to him that he'd come out with a white paper. And he chose not to do it then. And he explained the reasons as was available to him at that time. He said, no, look, I'll put my nation first. I don't want to come up with a white paper which is going to reveal all that was left for us to inherit. And that would only affect the investor's confidence it can affect the trust that the government, uh, the people of India have in India's own institutions. So it's not the best thing for me to do now, so I won't do it now. But after 10 full years, and after 10 full years of us very clearly delivering on our promises, taking Indian economy closer to being the third largest economy, realizing it probably within a year or two after we come back, let us say. 
we are now in a safe position to say to the people of India, this is exactly what we inherited, this is what it took for us to correct it. And in 10 years, if this is the level of effort we've put, not just to restore it, but to take it to that height. It is this kind of a leadership and decision making which we've given you in the last 10 years now that you voted us. So right time to bring it in, I would think. Thank <music> you.